All right. Let's get this party started. The first thing, of course, the first thing that I have to say is in nature of the combat sports, mixed martial arts industry, there were some last minute cancellations. Uh, one of them being BMC. I had a, I had booked a, a lo the local people would know him. Uh, he's a local sports anchor that was supposed to come last, but he canceled last minute. So now he got me. So I have to start off, of course, by saying welcome to the second annual Cali Fights Awards here in Fresno, California. I recognize a lot of faces that were here last year. Uh, just wanted to let you know some of the template uh, categories uh, remain the same. We did add a couple more categories per your feedback and your response to, to last year's event. Um, but before anything, just wanted to um, say thank you to everybody that, that is here tonight. I know um, there's some false sense that seeing that it's in Fresno, there's going to be some heavy Fresno representation that I can uh, attest that that is not 100% true. We definitely have people from, uh, from even from Sacramento with a huge event coming up uh, or happening tonight in Sacramento. We still have some Sacramento representation today. Uh, off the top of my head, of course, I have uh, Vacaville in mind. There's a table from uh, Vacaville, 10 minutes, 15 minutes from Sacramento, about a half hour from Sacramento. Uh, and so we go that high of Sacramento, we have the Bay Area, we have uh, somebody out there representing the Bay Area way back there. Uh, we have Temecula, down all the way from Southern California. So we definitely have Dry California and then that's also going to reflect in the, the nominees and, and the winners. So um, to get everything started, I would like to introduce to the podium the first presenter uh, a nominee for Ring Girl of the Year, Allison Kramer. Okay. There were quite a few submissions in 2014. Whether you're a wrestler or striker, even the best fighters can slip and get caught by surprise. The nominees for submission of the year are Alex Barajas submits Evan Solorio, Tachi Palace Fights, Triangle. JT Donaldson submits Kevin Barrage, <coughs> West Coast Fighting Championship, Inverted Armbar. Rolando Velasco submits Sergio Cortez, Tachi Palace Fights, Arm Triangle. Ryan Tobar submits Ryan Renew, Art of War, Triangle. Shiana Ricon submits Brooke Mayo, Central Coast Throwdown, Guillotine. And the winner is... JT Donaldson submits Kevin Ross. Imagine there's going to be a few uh, absent winners. So if you recognize a winner uh, and you feel free to uh, accept the award in their honor, please step up. <laughs> and don't have to. Okay. Why don't we in my category? I'm just going to go up there for step all. <laughs> What would we do without media, photographers, and marketing production? They are the ones who capture all those videos and photos. They deserve this recognition. The nominees for Top Fight website, photography, and videography are 5150 Fightwear, Central Cal MMA, Far Left Productions, Ismatic Productions, Vegetable Stoppage, and the winner is... Ismatic Production. All right. Everybody enjoy dinner? I have to come back here in a little bit, so I'm kind of nervous. Um, I want to thank my wife, my kids for picking up the long hours I sit in front of the computer. Professor Tom and Lori 
for Hot Black Fright Productions. Marcel, Kelly Fights for putting this on together. Uh, and all the fighters, because without you guys, we wouldn't be able to take pictures of anybody. <laughs> Thank you. hand or an unexpected foot to land perfectly on you. At that time, chances are you're going to be out for a few seconds. Still, much respect for both true competitors. And the nominees for Knockout of the Year are Anthony Torres, KOs, Daniel Aguilera, Christian Aguilera, KOs, Corey Kelly, Bama, USA, Max Griffin, KOs, Ricky Legere, Chachi Palace Fight, Michael Ball, KOs Josh Adams, Top Light Fight Club. <laughs> Vince Forty, KOs Burkaris McGill, West Coast Fighting Championship. And the winner is... Michael Ball, KOs <laughs> I think this is the first time I've ever been, you know, voted to win at anything. So I just want to say uh, thank you. First person I want to thank is uh, Professor Professor Tom. He made this happen. I want to thank the director. Um, I want to thank my teammates. You know, uh, every one of you guys. They work me. They push me. I definitely wouldn't be able to do it without them either. And then also, you know, my dad for pushing me, making sure that I stayed in the sport all my life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium from Ms. Mag Productions, who we just saw, Matthew Menchacha. Yeah. Back again. <laughs> Let's see. What can we say about the following list of nominees? The sport wouldn't be the same without them. If you think their job is easy, try consistently looking as great as them for every event. The nominees for number one ring girl are Allison Kramer, Hot Fight Fight Productions. <laughs> Ariana Nicole, the University of MMA. Christine Campbell, Global Knockout. Courtney Hawk Martinez of Hop Life Fight Productions. Whitney Corday, West Coast Fighting for the Championship. And the winner is Allison Kramer. to those sponsors who dress our fighters as they walk towards the cage. You have to give these sponsors the exposure they deserve. <laughs> the nominees for the top fight apparel company are 5150 Fightwear, <laughs> Chingo and Fight Gear, <laughs> Down the Scrap, Fight Logic, I Got My Own Back, and Tactical Violence. And the winner is 5155 here. Hey, that right there is my jam. Anyway, hey, this is uh, number two from Cali Fights Awards. And uh, 
I just like to say thank you to everybody. Uh, my voice is cracking again, and I normally do this stuff a lot. But um, thank you guys. I want to give a shout out to my partners, um, Leo Castellan, um, Vic Olivas, Aaron Clarefield, Sonia Galindo, she's been helping us. Um, to the fighters that we have, such as Yaya, we're dealing with her, um, Vincent Bordy, there's a lot of other guys we're bringing in. 2015 is going to be good for us. Um, I see we got the Bellator thing going on. We're going to be working closely with them. So thank you guys, and we hope to have fun with us. Everybody in the combat sports industry needs people like the ones we're about to recognize. It is because of these nominees that we are sometimes able to pay our gym membership, medicals, and nutritional supplements. The nominees for non MMA Small Business Sponsor of the Year are 5150 Energy Drink, Cali Muscle, Burway Paint Company, Lana's Egg Whites, and Nickel Nitro. Lana's egg whites. Yeah. Riley Prescott. You know, Lana sent me a text last night in case she went. So, let me pull it up real quick. Um, let's see here. I need an iPhone. Uh, Lana, 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 here we go. Okay. Here's what Lana said. She said that basically um, everybody that she has are fit like family to her. Um, they're very important to her. Um, the most in, most important thing, they are like her kids, her brothers, and her sisters. Um, she says she loves them all, and they can call her at any time of the night, and. I'm trying to make this a short version. Uh, she sent me a long text, but she said she takes pride in mentoring and caring for them. And she said she loves them as their own blood, and she's happy to accept this award. So, Lana, thank you. Please welcome to the podium a very well known fighter inspector, the very own Yvette Briscoe. Sometimes these gentlemen become more than teammates. They become leaders, counselors, and even grow to be father-like figures. The respect they earn is undeniable. The nominees for Coach or Trainer of the Year are Danny Valdivinos, Team KO. Fabio Prado, Fabio Prado's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Gerson Shilapaki from Shootbox Long Beach. Rudy Ott from Unlimited MMA. And Tom Knox from Elite Team Visalia. And the winner is Ott from Unlimited <laughs> Alright, the next group of nominees fill a void that thank you. sometimes the fighters themselves lack. Business savvy, strategic planning, or unbiased decision making. There's no doubt having one of these gentlemen by your side makes your training schedule a lot easier to manage. The nominees for Sports Agent of the Year are Dave Hirschbein, MMA Gold Fight Team. Isaac Ruiz, Team Ruiz Fighter Network. Ethan House, Iridium Sports Agency. And Ray Lopez from Takedown Management. Your winner is Dave Hirschbein from MMA Gold. So how do you avoid having an inexperienced athlete get in the cage with somebody who has more than a few fights under his belt? Well, that's the job of the next group of nominees. 
The nominees for Best Matchmaker are Anthony Quesada from Muay Thai Global, Jane Nesioko from 408 Fights, Jay Tan from the University of MMA, John Cho from Pat Fights, Michael McNeil from Central Coast Throwdown, and Richard Goodman from Tashi And the winner is Anthony Quesada from Muay Thai Global. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Thank you. Um, trying to bring out traditional Muay Thai to the to Sac Valley and Bay Area, and uh, you know, I just want to thank my wife and family for putting putting up with all of it because it takes a lot of time and effort and hours and not late nights and away from your family and everything to uh, put on these great shows for all the fighters and and uh, and to study the, the fighters and match them up. And, and uh, try to do a, a great job doing that. But thanks, Kelly Fights, for having me. Appreciate it, and thank you guys. This year, uh, Kelly Fights had the honor of partnering up with uh, two other great organizations, and which is what brings us this weekend here to Fresno. Um, we had the honor of partnering up with CAMEL, California Amateur Mixed Martial Arts Organization. <laughs> right? we, had, we had the honor of partnering up with uh, CAMEL and 559 Fights, and between the three of us, we had the weigh-ins on Thursday, we had the uh, state championship finals last night here in Fresno, and then we wrap up the weekend of MMA here uh, with all you lovely people tonight. To talk a little bit about that partnership and the happenings of last night at the state championship, please welcome uh, Camel President JT Steele. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here. Uh, MMA is exciting in California, isn't it? We have a state that is unique amongst all others. Uh, in the state of California, we have the most mixed martial arts fights of any state in the country, by far. And not only do we have the most mixed martial arts fights in the country, we have the greatest gyms, coaches, and instructors, trainers in the country in California. People come from all over the country to train right here in our backyard, and that's a pleasure, and that's an honor for us to be able to have these type of coaches and individuals. And given that we have the most fights, we have the best coaches and trainers in the country, I submit to you, we have the greatest fighters in the country right here in California. I'm confident about that. But since we have so much mixed martial arts and we have such a huge state in California, we don't have a lot of opportunities for our huge community to come together. And we, on behalf of the amateur of Camo and the amateur mixed martial arts community, want to thank Marcel Marmalejo for bringing us together, north, south, central, where we can uh, fraternize and, and be together for a night of awards and recognize what truly amazing athletes and individuals we have in our community. So thank you very much. <laughs> we also have another opportunity for us as a, a large community to come together once a year, and that's in the Camo State Championship Tournament, which is a very unique tournament. It's, it's the only true state championship martial arts tournament in our country. We had the opportunity to have that tournament last night, and I'd like to introduce our Chief Inspector Brad Landon, who'd like to recognize the state champions for 2014 who fought, who, who welcomed all challengers by entering a very daunting uh, tournament. And he'd like to read their names and, and recognize them tonight. 
Thank you. Before I do that, I want to recognize J.T. Steele. Uh, back in 2009, when amateur MMA was legalized, uh, he was part of several meetings to, uh, to become an organization to oversee the, the general health and safety and the welfare of the fighters. This is a guy who has a law degree who gave up the income he could have had as a lawyer to have the income that he now has running MMA. And you all know what that means. <laughs> he works eight days a week and he makes about a third of what he would have made as a lawyer. So, J.T. Steele. No relation, but the winner last night at heavyweight, also a Mr. Steele, was Scott Steele. <laughs> the winner of cruiserweight, Michael Quintero. Light heavyweight, Ozzy Diaz. 170 weight class, Alexander Lopez. 155, JJ Okinovich. 145, Jacob Rosales. 135, Isaiah Batin Gonzalez. 125, Eugene Cancino. Yeah. A show of hands of who was at the fights last night. Okay. You guys didn't miss it. Everybody else, you missed some great fights. Come next year. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brenda, for some of the kind words. I wasn't expecting that. But myself, like many of you in the audience, we have very few opportunities in our lives. Sometimes the windows are very small for us to do things that we truly love, uh, do things that we're truly passionate about. I have that, I have that ability to work with you. Uh, I love working in this community. Um, let's go on with, the, with some of these nominees tonight. Who else to make a, an event live and, and entertaining as possible. They liven our audience. They keep us engaged round to round. Uh, the nominees for the announcer of the year are Donald DeNoyer, Jim Cooley, Joey Perez, Tyson Johnson, and Wayne Wilson. The winner, <laughs> Jim Cooley. Uh, real quick, before I say anything else, I want to uh, say congratulations to Professor Tom for tonight getting the, uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award. It's very deserved. Yeah. And uh, I want to say also congratulations to the other nominees in the ring announcer category. And this year I will not thank my girlfriend and my fiance like I did last year. Because uh, that came out really bad. Uh, but really quick, I wrote it down real fast because I forgot some people last year. Hoplite, Titans Cage, WFC, Bomb First, JRT Spell, Central Coast Throwdown, IFC, Bread for Battle, Panda Cup, Sergio Silva, Cesar Gracie, Elite Fighting in New York, and Rogue Warrior. Thank you for having me as your announcer. Thank you. committee has added two categories. Uh, one, both that I'm very, very passionate about myself. The following set of nominees is responsible for the safety and of the fighters and the fairness of competition. The nominee for Inspector of the Year, Brandy Gilliland, Clay yeah. Braswell, Derek Williams, Steve Fossum. The winner of Inspector of the Year 2014, Derek Williams. <laughs> 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 
Ah, I'm a little nervous right now. I always wondered like what my walk-up music would be like as a fighter, and I don't think that was it. But <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I don't need to fight anyone. Anymore. Um, I just want to thank Kelly Fights Magazines for this award. It's very, very humbling. Um, I want to thank all of you fighters and cornermen and everyone that comes to the event. Uh, we actually do this job not for the pay, but actually for the love of the fighters and the relationships that we build with you. So thank you once again. Um, I'm really honored and I hopefully will be one of the inspectors at one of your fights. And thank you to the camo team. Without them, like I tell JT after every fight we talk, um, I can't do it without them. So thank you. Appreciate it. An amazing inspector. The fighters are in good hands. Another category after this year involves the only people inside the cave with the fighters. They're the only ones who really know what truly happens inside that cage. We entrust our loved ones with them each and every week. The nominees for Referee of the Year are Jason McCoy. Mark Lolly. Dan Spell. Ayarn Rex. The winner of 2014 Referee of the Year, Mark Lolly. Like others said, this is totally unexpected. This is great to be in front of a crowd and not yelling, you suck. It's <laughs> well, I have to thank my family, my wife Tony, and uh, my good buddy Jason. We've been on the road doing this for a long time. Appreciate it. And everybody involved, without the teams and the promoters and the fights and the fighters, couldn't be here, could do this job done up. Thank you. So this is what happens every time uh, we initially open uh, the nominations for, for these awards, for both the nominees and the recipients. Uh, we release a open nom an open nomination where everybody can literally write in anybody's name. You can write in your cat's name, it's allowed <laughs> in the open nomination. Um, of course, at the end of the day, um, I can't do this all by myself. I can't go over the 3,000, 4,000 submissions uh, to review the credibility, I guess, the credibility of every single nominee. Uh, we, I have about four to five uh, other committee members that help me validate all the nominees before they actually get into the multiple choice uh, ballots. And I don't think, I think 99% of you don't know anybody don't know the members of my committee, which that's a good thing, that way you won't be uh, contacting them. <laughs> but uh, you're about to meet two of them. Uh, one of them is uh, my blood brother. He's going to present a couple weight class specific uh, categories. Ricardo Manolejo. I actually uh, received a text message earlier today. Um, I know you guys heard the music uh, next door, and apparently uh, after the awards, we're gonna knock these wood, uh, these panels down, and we're just gonna join the party. So, uh, I'm just kidding. Um, so tonight, uh, the nominees for flyweight, flyweight of the year are Anthony Figueroa from Ant Dogs MMA. Anthony Torres from Team Knockout. 
Eugene Cancino from Tribe MMA. Michael Gaw, last, last stand fighting. And the winner is Anthony Torres from Team yeah. Bantamweight of the Year are Jesse Ledesma, Team Knockout. Is it Team Knockout or Team KO? KO. KO. Team KO. Rolando Velasco, Last Stand Fighting. Shariana Rincon, Fabio Prados, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And Terry On Ware, Systems Training Center. Shayana Rinkamba. Oh, there's more of you. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of nervous and I told my mom that uh, I really kind of don't want to win because I don't want to talk. And I said that. Uh, just promise me not to record it to a true play. God, calm down. <laughs> so, um, it's definitely a different feeling um, having people believe in you. I've been an athlete all my life. Um, I just transferred uh, to mixed martial arts this year, so my first fight was in May, um, 2nd of July and October, so I'm 3 0 right now. Um, I'm going to try and remember who to thank, and if I leave someone out, then I'm sorry. I still love you. <laughs> um, I want to thank my mom most definitely. She's a big supporter of me. Um, my family, definitely. I said definitely twice. Um, I want to thank my sponsors for believing in me. Um, the Bivens family from Yakuza Moon, and Riley and all the guys from 5150. Yeah. Um, Am I missing someone? Someone else probably. Is. No, I'm not. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, my coaches, Fabio Prado from Prado Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, after my first fight, actually, I walked up to him and I, I almost cried. Uh, I've never really had anyone uh, tell me, you know, I believe you're going to win before actually fighting. So it's a great feeling. Um, I expect to be fighting for a while, so I'm just glad that the community is so like welcoming, and um, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you as my career continues. Uh, wait, let me think. Make sure I didn't forget anybody. Uh, oh, uh, some of the guys at Alpha Mill um, definitely showed me a few things. Um, my last fight, Cynthia was a big help. Well, you probably know her. She's Champ at Central Coast, but okay, that's it. <laughs> the nominees for Featherweight of the Year are Castle Williams, the North MMA, JT Donaldson from Guerrilla Jiu Jitsu. Justin Lin from Team Cop Tonkin. <laughs> Sal Becerra from Last, Last Stand Fighting. <laughs> and the winner is Justin Lin. Yeah! <laughs>
want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, it's amazing to be here. It's awesome. I appreciate it. Um, I want to thank my family for being here. They're awesome. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Uh, I'd like to thank my uh, manager, Isaac Ruiz. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't uh, be here all this year. So thank you, Isaac. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, as for um, Cali Fights, I'm uh, really happy you guys uh, nominated me and supported me for the being the fighter of the year or featherweight of the year, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Before I continue with the next one, uh, first off, congratulations to those that have won that have won an award uh, up to now. Um, and now the nominees for lightweight of the year are JJ Akonovitz from Dark Horse Gym, <laughs> Luis Howdy from Torres MMA, <laughs> Nick Bustamante from The Throne Base yeah. Camp, <laughs> and Tony Lamas from Fearless MMA. Good jams out there. <laughs> and uh, the winner is Luis Jauregui from Torres and Mermaid. I'll let Luis know you guys will see it on Facebook. <laughs> So he, my brother, is the one that helps me with the open nomination form. That was the event, the names you wrote down, and your friends and family, of course, that they wrote down, uh, were credible to be nominated. Now the person who, after that happens, I open a live uh, multiple choice ballot where you only could choose from the top nominees of the open uh, nomination. This year we received over 5,200 open uh, multiple choice uh, ballots submitted. So, <laughs> last year I believe we were reaching 3,900. So from last year to this year we definitely went up over a thousand uh, votes. So, <laughs> I say that because majority of the times um, it helps when when um, you tell your friends and family to vote for you. Uh, I think every promoter, every matchmaker, even every manager, everybody in the industry uh, would agree with me that if you could have the most spectacular record, you could have the most amazing career, but if you don't find a way to let the matchmaker know of your career, he's never going to know you exist. So don't be a fighters, especially fighters. Don't be afraid to put yourself up front and let yourself be known in your career. There's a couple of you guys that are great at doing that, so. The next presenter is uh, the man that actually helped me uh, evaluate all the data, all the 5,200 um, voting ballots that were submitted this year. Uh, please welcome to the podium, Pedro Martinez. Good evening, everyone. I also do photography, all right? So, I'm not much of a photographer. Uh, I enjoy taking pictures and uh, I enjoy being out here with you guys today. Um, let's get this started here. The nominees for Welterweight of the Year are Alexander Lopez, Kuntar MMA, Danny Ramirez, MMA Gold, Garrett Marks, Eastrone Base Camp, Mason Coward, Eastrone Base Camp, Mason, oh, I said, I said that. Yeah. <laughs> Max Griffin, Maranobos Martial Arts, <laughs> and the winner is Max Griffin, Maranobos Martial Arts. Thank you. 
The nominees for middleweight of the year are Idris Wasi, Carnage, Jesse James, Fresno Fight Club, George Zuniga, Deep Room Base Camera, Vince Corey, Cortez Martial Arts. Hold it, I am. And the winner is Vincent Bori, Cortez Marshall. Vincent Bordy, uh, he reps 5150. Um, he has been studying a lot for his master's degree, so that's probably part of the reason. Thank you, Vincent I'm sure you want to thank you guys, Kelly Pipes, and everybody else. Thanks. Thank you, Vincent Bordy. Thank you, Vincent Bordy. Thank you, Vincent All right, the nominees for Light Heavyweight of the Year are Anthony Ruiz, Detroit Baseball, Brandon Hester, Rogue Empire MMA, Dominique Reyes, Cage Combat Academy, Leo Cantu, The Pit, Kerman. And the winner is Brandon Hester. Rogue Empire MMA. <laughs> On the website, Brandon knew he, he had a prior engagement. Uh, I'm sure he didn't think he was going to win, so everyone that voted for him, thank you. And the camera, thank you. <laughs> the nominees for heavyweight of the year are Rudolph Buendia, Last Stand Fight Team, Javier Ayala, Fearless Fighter, Josue Lugo, Kung Lee, Will Smith, Combat Sports Academy. <laughs> and the winner is Josue Lugo. For always being a big supporter, I gotta say thank you to Big Guy Hobby because I thought he was gonna take it for the second year in a row. So I was like, I was showing up with more for formality for me today. I was like, no, he got it. But I want to say thank you to everybody that voted for me, nominated for me. I gotta thank God. I gotta thank my parents because uh, being a single father is uh, tough, and they take care of my daughter most of the time when I'm training during the week. So I'm always back and forth. I gotta thank my beautiful girlfriend, Jasmine, and my son, JJ, cause you know, she keeps me in check with my diet when I'm not with my coaches. She's probably more stricter than my coaches and my parents. So I thank uh, Kung Lee Zesh MMA, Smash Fight Teams, my sponsors, Lito Body Parts, Max Fit, uh, Supplements. Um, I know I'm missing a couple, but I just wanna thank everybody again and uh, appreciate it. Thank you guys all. Thank you. All right, I'll be going back to taking pictures. <laughs> Another thing we're doing different this year is um, in addition to uh, adding referee of the year and inspector of the year, uh, we also uh, got a huge response last year from having uh, from adding a, a different uh, category, but it's not really a, categor a category that uh, that is open for nominations or voting or what have you. It's a category for uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award. And that, of course, goes above and beyond a person that um, has made a huge impact. Not today, not yesterday, not last month, but within the last several years ongoing from when, uh, from when he or she started um, 
teaching, practicing uh, combat sports, or any uh, self-defense uh, education. Uh, so this year, uh, we're going to jump into something different, and we're going to honor the very first Cali Fights Lifetime Achievement Award. And when we opened uh, the suggestion, just like we do all the time, saying, hey, we want to do this, what do you think? Uh, we received uh, several names, and we received several nominations, but there is one name that kept popping up throughout California. Uh, here to talk a little bit more about uh, the recipient of the very first Cali Fights Lifetime Achievement Award. He's talking about it. He's not winning it. <laughs> From last time fighting, Rolando. Thank you guys. Um, yeah, I'm up here to talk about Professor Tom Theophanopoulos. but I'm going to call him to the podium, Michael Gall and his son, Bill Theophanopoulos. <laughs> Bill knows Professor better than all of the students combined, so I'm going to let Bill go over the history of um, Professor Tom's martial arts, history, his background, and where he's come from. Uh, my name is Bill Theophanopoulos. Uh, I'm uh, Professor Tom's son. and. Uh, his experience in the martial arts um, started way before I was born. Um, he uh, started off with wrestling, um, junior Olympic uh, qualifier, and then uh, he had a you know a little bit of an accident, and uh, that left him um, to where he couldn't qual or he couldn't compete uh, in the junior Olympics. So from there, he started uh, an art called Kaj Kembo. It's a uh, Kempo art from uh, Hawaii. And uh, matter of fact, the same year that I was born, 1985, he got his uh, first degree black belt in that martial art, okay? And uh, for me, I look at that, uh, not only was his firstborn son, you know, born that same year, but his dedication to the martial art, you know, he didn't take time off because he, you know, had a newborn at home. He not only took care of me, but he also trained for his black belt. Um, after that, we moved to the valley. Uh, this is when we lived in the Bay Area. And uh, he didn't really want to, uh, you know, he had other things going on. He wanted to practice the martial arts just on his own. He didn't have any desire to teach, really. He just wanted to pursue it, um, you know, in his life. And uh, people just were drawn to him. They, uh, we started off in the garage in our, in our house. Uh, somebody saw him or heard him practice. He was, you know, yelling, ah, G.I. or whatever. And they thought somebody was in trouble and they came in and, you know, sure enough, he was practicing his forms, you know. And uh, we just kept growing, growing up through the garage. And eventually we started our own, you know, gym in Oakdale, California, which obviously grew. Um, when I was young, we started off, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of uh, MMA around at the time. It was all down in Brazil. Um, UFC started, you know, 19, uh, 1993. We saw it, and we're like, okay, we gotta get a piece of this. <laughs> so we started uh, doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and uh, you know, he started first. We always did a little bit of judo. We had a grappling background with his wrestling, and uh, so he was always one belt ahead of me. You know, when I was a white belt, he was a blue belt, and we used to compete together. He was, uh, matter of fact, we go to tournaments. It was just me, him, and uh, my brother Frank. And so, not only was our coach coaching us, right, but he was our father, and he led by example. Uh, anytime we went to the US Open, uh, World, anything, um, you know, we'd see our old man get out there and whoop these dudes, and, uh, you know, we had to step up after that. You know, we, we had to, um, it was an inspiration. He was a, a leader, uh, not just telling us what to do, but he would go out there and throw down on the mat just like uh, we were aspiring to. Uh, so eventually, we started doing MMA, and it just grew from there. Uh, like I said, it was nothing. He never sat down and said, oh man, I want to be the best uh, you know, coach. I don't want, you know, I want to get guys. I want to do this, I want to do that. People were just drawn to him. Um, they saw what kind of person he was and uh, the honor that he uh, put out there, and that they wanted to be a part of it, basically. Um, so one, one experience I'd like to share with you guys, um, and there's a lot of history, we could be here for hours just discussing all the experiences that we've had together, but when I was uh, a younger kid, when I was like in third grade, uh, I was getting picked on 
And I remember I told my dad, I don't know what to do. Like, should I fight the guys? What should I do, you know? And he said, you know what? Uh, and I was like, I don't know if I can win, you know? And he's like, you know what? Well, I'm just gonna start training you. We're gonna get up at six o'clock in the morning every day. We're gonna go down to the gym and I'm gonna put you through a regiment. Uh, just to give you some more confidence. And uh, I'm telling you, it's straight out of like Karate Kid. Like, you know, I was hitting bags and the little boards, you know? And uh, I never had to, you know, go down and throw down like in a movie or something, but it gave me the confidence I needed to get through school. Um, you know, anything that I've any, anything I ever wanted to accomplish in life, he was there 100 percent, even if he didn't agree with it 100 <laughs> percent. So, um, you know, this is well deserved, Dad. I love you, and uh, love you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael. Ball. Um, I'm one of Professor's black belts, and I've been with him for 15 years of my life. And uh, I just want to say, uh, other than being an amazing martial artist, uh, professor, he, one reason why I think he's getting this award is not just because of that, but also he's a good mentor to not only just to kids and adults, but to everyone. He's a good person, you know, he teaches you exactly how to be. He's not one of those people who, you know, like you have the parents who sit there and tell you to, uh, not to do something, but they go ahead and do it anyways. He literally, he, what he says, he does. He doesn't eat McDonald's, he's not eating McDonald's. <laughs> if he eats all his vegetables, he's gonna eat all his vegetables. And uh, one thing that uh, I know affected me a lot was uh, he was a very big uh, person in my life, whether good, bad, positive, negative, and well, never negative. <laughs> but um, I know one thing you know that stuck with me, and I have a really hard time, is uh, being on time to anything, it doesn't matter what it is. And I know for this day, I have one quote that sticks with me from him is, uh, how do I go? Oh, if you're on time, you're early. If you're, oh, sorry, if you're early, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're, if you're on time, you're late. Yes, yeah, so if you're on time, you're late. And then if you're late, you're fired. <laughs> so, um, he has, plenty of quotes, but I know that definitely, that's one of them that stuck with me, and he's just, you know, it's, it's helped me out. Every single thing he, had, you know, if you have a question for him, he has an answer. And not just, you know, developing good martial artists, but he's also helped uh, developing good human beings. You know, from anywhere from doing uh, self-defense classes for women to going to schools and uh, donating his time to help kids who can't for the martial arts, just kind of learn a little bit new, something new that they could take on in their life. But other than that, um, he's a he's a great man. I'm a little nervous, sorry. <laughs> but he's a great man, just all in general. You know, to whoever he meets, he makes sure you know he treats them exactly how he wants to be treated. So just you know, he's an awesome person. Thank you, Professor, for letting me be here. So, uh, um, these two have been with Professor the longest. I just met Professor about 10 years ago when I was in high school. And the moment I walked into that gym, he, he accepted me with open arms like family. And that's the one thing I've always loved about Professor as an instructor. He's not just a teacher, you know, you gotta pay your dues and you're out the door and that's it. That's, that's, that's where the business ends. No, he, he calls you when you're at home to see how you're doing, you know, he's, Whenever we have a problem or an issue, he's always checking up on us, um, and he's there by our sides. It doesn't matter if it's three in the morning or, you know, or if he's going through his own tragedies. He's a, uh, he's like a father to all of us. And uh, I really appreciate you, Professor, for everything you've done in my life. Um, I just for being there, but for. Uh, so I think it's all on the right path, you know. Not only do you teach us the martial arts, but you teach us to be good citizens and good people. You know, you instill in us hard work, dedication, determination, discipline. Um, but to be humble in battle and to live life with integrity and honesty and 
to instill that into other people as well. So we hope, as your students, and I speak for everybody at the gym, that we hope to make you proud and carry on your uh, your teachings long, long past when you're done teaching. So, um, without further ado, I present uh, Professor Thomas, a lifetime teacher. The day that I came to this country as a little boy and had problems with English was uh, public speaking. <laughs> and a lot of the reason why I avoided even teaching people because I was so scared to be up here uh, talking in front of a lot of people. So for me, the martial arts has given me so much confidence, I can't even begin to tell you. It's good for everybody. So I'm not going to take too much time. I think everybody took too much time on me already. I want to thank everyone uh, for, especially myself, for putting on an event like this for this award thank you so much and uh, I want to thank uh, my son Bill for running our Oakdale Academy He's doing such a phenomenal job in Orlando for for uh, running our Sonora Academy uh, Marcos Tome who's running our Merced Academy all of our affiliations uh, worldwide we're opening in Greece uh, we opened in Greece this year an affiliate school in Athens I'm so happy there and uh, of course most of all I want to thank my beautiful wife Lori for all the support she's given me I, uh, talk about, you know, I, have, I, I probably have over 500 students. I've got about 30 pro and amateur fighters, and, and normally I'm gone almost every weekend. And the support this woman gives me is just unbelievable. Thank you. Bye bye. expecting this presentation to be as beautiful as it was. Thank you for those who came up and spoke to us. We will uh, wrap this up, this presentation, with a couple words from Ms. Yvette Briscoe. So uh, I just want to say something about Professor Tom, though, before I do that. Um, you know, the gentleman who came up and spoke um, talked about what he's done uh, for them as fighters and as his uh, son. But um, Professor Tom has also had a profound impact on the community, and not just the MMA community, but the community in general. I started a nonprofit organization in Merced, and we were very small. We had no money to get started, but with my passion for MMA, I wanted to do something for at-risk kids, and I wanted it to include MMA. And so I contacted him and um, asked him for some support, and he allowed us to use his facilities in Oakdale and in Merced. Um, he came out to our events um, when we had students who um, were part of a mentoring program who uh, these were kids who had gotten involved in gangs and um, drugs and all kinds of things like that. They opened up um, lessons, uh, jiu-jitsu lessons for the students and gave us a, an amazing deal on price so that these kids could come and learn some discipline and learn um, what it's like to have somebody appreciate um, their talents and to see potential in you where no one else sees it. And so uh, professors' contributions to the community, um, to the MMA community, are even more than what he has done for um, the community in general, but it's all very much appreciated. So thank you. Now it's my turn to present a couple of awards. <laughs> you would think that I know this. I wrote most of it, but I still <laughs> have to read it. At one time, it was said that females didn't belong in the sport of mixed martial arts. Well, say that in front of these athletes and you'll be sure to regret it. <laughs> the nominees for Female Fighter of the Year are 
Brianna Bam Vern from Ant Dogs MMA. <laughs> Kelly McGill, Best and Fighting. <laughs> Lisette Neri, Universal Grappling Academy. <laughs> Marianne Reynaud, Elite Team Visalia. <laughs> and Shiana Rincon from Poppy Prado. And the winner is <laughs> Marianne Renault. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mary wasn't able to come today. Uh, she trains at our gym at Elite. She works really hard. Over the last couple of years, she's built a very big uh, women's team for our jiu-jitsu, which is thriving right now. Uh, last week, it was now she got signed by the UFC, so that's pretty awesome. So, congrats to Mary. All right, thanks. The term amateur doesn't belong in the same sentence as the following six gentlemen. They put in as much work just like any professional. The nominees for Amateur Fighter of the Year are Albert Morales Systems Training Center, Anthony Torres, Team KO, Brandon Hester, Rogue Empire MMA, JT Donaldson, Guerrilla Jiu Jitsu, Lino Enriquez, Muay Thai Boxing Sacramento, and Shayana Rincon, Fabio Prado. And the winner of Amateur of the Year goes to Albo Morales. This is painful. So what do matchmakers and promoters do when you have last minute cancellations? Anybody want to say? Or just rather not say? <laughs> the, committee, the committee continues to establish two different categories for Professional Fighter of the Year. First is a young professional fighter, which means he has had 10 professional fights or less. And then the Professional Fighter of the Year with 11 professional fights or more. So let's get started with the Young Professional Fighter of the Year. The nominees are Castle Williams, the Pitt North MMA. Chris Hanika, the Throne Base Camp. Joe Neal, Crispin Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Justin Lin, Team Talkins. And Vince Boy Cortez Martial Arts. And the winner for Young Pro of the Year is Mr. Castle Williams, the Pink Dog MMA. Um, <laughs> thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, um, I definitely didn't expect to win. So um, I just want to thank the pit, you know, everybody that got me ready for my fights. Um, my parents for supporting me. Um, John Happen with my coach. Uh, you know, he, uh, I just started training with John uh, the last year and a half, and we're on a on a tear right now. We've really clicked, and um, I'm really excited for 2015, and I can't wait to put on a. Um, a bunch more you know, awesome performances. Thank you. The following six nominees have had 11 professional fights or more. And the nominees for Professional Fighter of the Year are Alex Hector Sandoval, Team Alpha Male. 
Anthony Rees, the drum bass camp. Yeah. Yeah. Javier Ayala, Fearless Fighters. Yeah. Max Griffin, Mary Nobles Martial Arts. And Terry Onwear Systems Training Center. And the Professional Fighter of the Year Award goes to... It should be easier. I was the one who would take them. <laughs> Anthony Reese, the yeah. Base Camp. Yeah. I got the Drone Base Camp, man. I got some of the best guys in the world to train with, and they're right here in California at, at Dethrone Base Camp. Um, last but not least, I'd like to thank my wife. I know she won't yeah. be bringing it up, but for like 12 years, she's been putting up with my BS. Imagine all the mood swings. Uh, imagine. Imagine all the, all the mood swings for every fight day I've had. I've, I've had 54 pro fights. Um, you know, I uh, got six fights in this year. I got two in Russia this year. So um, I think this is well deserved. Thank you. I will have to admit, the following category has me a little bit nervous, just a little bit nervous. Uh, needless to say, it's a huge upset, and you go with what the people want, right? <laughs> Nominees for Best Amateur Promotion Show of the Year are 559 five, Fights. Central Coast Throwdown. Oh. Muay Thai Global. Yes. University of MMA. Yes. And last year's winners, World Class World Combat Series. Yes. And the winner is Muay Thai Global. Didn't expect this. So, uh, my two partners couldn't make it: Sean Korea and uh, Crew Rick Fortes. And I'm just uh, thankful to be here. And thanks for California again for putting this on. Um, and I want to thank the staff that helps me out to run these great shows uh, at the Elgro Muay Thai Academy. A lot of it is the students and uh, help to make these events successful. So thanks again, and appreciate it. Thank you. And we have to thank the following list of nominees. They are the stepping stone for every single professional fighter before they make it to the big leagues. The nominees for best pro or casino promotions company are Bama USA, <laughs> Hoplite Fight Productions, <laughs> Tachi Palace Fight. Up and Comers Unlimited and West Coast Fighting Championship. And the winner is Tachi Palace Fight. Thank you guys, um, everybody that voted. Um, we've been doing this for a very, very long time. Um, I kind of wanted to just kind of give you like a little rundown a little bit real quick. Um, we started back in uh, June of 2001 with um, um, WC. Um, so we had WC, I came to Tachi when I had partnerships with them. Uh, we had Leonard Garcia and Dan Server on the card that night. Um, and, uh, 2007, uh, we created EFC when uh, WC got bought out by Zupa, and uh, we had uh, well, you know, old 
butter bean on that show. <laughs> uh, so hey, we were starting all over and went from you know having WC there to trying to do this on our own. And um, you know we, we did really good. We had a lot of fighters come through there, and um, it was a change of management, and um, we had to start all over again. And that's when um, myself and a couple others we created uh, Tachi Palace fights, and. Um, the very first fight was October 8th of 2009. We had um, uh, Jessica Ricosi, Ulysses Gomez, Joe Soto, David Mitchell, Chad Mendes, and Michael McDonald all on that card. Um, and all those individuals moved on and they went to the UFC and they have uh, very great uh, successful careers. The um, reason why I wanted to bring that up, and uh, I was you know, talking to my wife on the way up here, is if, uh, you know, if you win, I just wanted to let you guys know that um, you know, Taji Palace Fights has been through a lot over this past um, you know, 14 years, 15 years. And, and um, every time something happened, um, we uh, you know, went back to the drawing board and started all over and uh, fought our way back again to the top. And then uh, you know, something else happens and um, you know, we start all over and work our way back to the top. Uh, I think we're doing really good now after 22 shows um, with Taji Palace Fights. We're, uh, I just wanted to, wanted to say that because I wanted to let you guys know that I, we know what you guys are going through. We know how it is to be on top and how to win and how to be um, going 100 miles an hour and then all of a sudden you get lost and you drop back down to the bottom and you're in the, you're in the dumps for a second and you get, guess what, you just build yourself back up and you keep going and keep going. And <laughs> We've been doing this for a long time. And, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just very proud of everything that we do, all the fighters that, that come through there. Um, there's a lot of people that come through there, Jason McCoy, you and your crew, you know, um, it's, I just want, there's too many people to thank, there's way too many fighters, um, but um, I'm just very proud, and uh, thank you guys. We're about done, we have three categories to go, and we can't finish the night until we recognize the centers where these athletes create a bond, the competitive friendships, and the agreements to hold each other accountable while training for their next fight. Here to present the top categories, recognizing the fight teams and gyms, is two-time announcer of the year, Jim Cooley. Real quick, I get to cheat because I'm back up here. I forgot to thank everybody who voted for me and Marcel, and of course the people who are supporting me here tonight, so thank you to them as well. Real quick, I wanna, Anthony Ruiz said something that no other um, nominees or winners said tonight. He said that his award was well-deserved, and all you guys that said you were surprised that you won, you shouldn't be, because you earned it, and everybody in here deserves the awards that they got here tonight. We hear it all the time, that fighter lost because he gassed out in the middle of the round. The next line of nominees exists so that these fighters build the stamina to go the distance. The nominees for top strength and conditioning gym of the year are Athletic Performance, Fresno. Yeah. Full Force Personal Training, Modesto. Iron Core, Long Beach. System Training Center, Hawthorne. And UFC Gym, Fresno. And the winner is open envelope. You think I didn't know I had to open envelope? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marcel. That's enough. All right. Here we go. I heard that, Lori. And the winner is? Wow, you got good ears. UFC Jim Fresno. They're uh, pretty much the underdogs of this category. We're not really well known. Um, we've been establishing ourselves over the past few years, kind of bringing in specialists to really just kind of enhance the uh, martial arts within the UFC gym in Fresno. It's a big name, so we have a lot on our shoulders to really try to, you know, just try to promote them and um, make them look good here in town. Thank, we want to thank all the members, uh, everybody that supported us, all the fighters that did their strength and conditioning camps with us. 
Uh, we want to continue to uh, be a part of it. Just be a part of it. That's all we want. Thank everybody. Um, we give it all to him in the end. God bless. They say you can't be good at everything until you're great at something. Let's put the spotlight on those gyms that focus on one particular art, whether it be Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, boxing, etc. The nominees for Top Specialty Gym of the Year are Art of Eight Muay Thai, Fresno. B Street Boxing, San Mateo. Shootbox Muay Thai, Long Beach. Elite Team Jiu Jitsu, Visalia. Fabio Prado's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Vacaville. And the winner is Elite Team Jiu Jitsu Visalia. I feel kind of funny accepting this as I'm only a three stripe white belt. <laughs> to, uh, but uh, <laughs> this award definitely goes to Tom Knox, He's just an amazing guy. He works really hard for all his students. He's always there for everybody. And uh, yeah, man, our team's our team's awesome. So come check us out. Alright guys, before I read the last award of the night, can I please get a round of applause for Marcel and his team? Yeah. 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 And I asked for that because I want to win again next year. So. <laughs> and now, the one that everyone's been waiting for, this award is more than just a gym award. Gyms create strong families and lasting bonds. The last award of the night goes to the top MMA gym and team, and the nominees are Shootbox, Long Beach. The Throne Base Camp, Fresno. Elite Team, Visalia. Last Stand Fight Team, Oakdale, Merced, Sonora. Uriah Favors Ultimate Fitness, Sacramento. And the winner is... Oakdale. Last Stand Fight Team. Professor Tom. Man, I can't believe this. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Amazing night. Um, it's been a 40 year journey for me. And uh, all I can say is we're just getting started. I've never loved the martial arts more than I do right now. So thank you very much, everybody. Marcel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the second annual Cali Fights Awards ceremony. And there's gentlemen here that's bringing me the bill. Uh,